So we've had a few questions from the know how video. One of them is how we're changing the blade over on the bandsaw. Today we're going to be using the Sabre 350. And while we've got the blade off, we're going to show you a bit of maintenance on the flywheels as well. So let's look how to take the blade off. So first of all, we're going to open the top and the bottom door. And then it's a bit easier on the uh, Sabres because we've got a cam action wheel for tensioning the blade itself. So we release that by an handle at the back and it drops the wheel down. We'll show you that in more detail when we've got the wheel off. That's released the tension on the blade. Now we've just got the rise and fall mechanism just a bit lower than halfway to make it easy access for when we're taking the blade off. And obviously we've got the slot in the side of the column as well. But before we do that, the only other thing we need to remove is this pin. That, that serves two purposes. If there's an issue with the blade when it's in use and it tries to come off, it's going to stop it coming off and towards you. But the other thing, or the main thing that it's there for, is the slot in the table is the last machined operation. And when we press this pin in, which is on a taper, it makes sure that these two surfaces are nice and flush. So when we've got the timber on there, there's a nice working area. So we just drop that out of the way. We we'll drop the tension off, so that's the main tension, this is the fine adjustment tension and that allows us just to draw the blade off like I said <coughs> through the rise and fall mechanism, through the slot in the column and around the bar that obviously normally holds the rip fence. So we can push that out of the way for now. <coughs> so while we've got the blade out of the way, which is an easy operation, gives us a chance to look at the, the top wheel. Now, we're just going to use a Allen key to remove a socket head cap screw. That's got a washer and a spring washer on. Let's push that out of the way for now, so we need it later. And that allows us then to draw this front wheel off. It's just on a, an actual, there's a little bit of movement there, but you've got a double bearing and you can see the holes that have been put in there for balancing so it's a nice balanced wheel and what we're going to do is we just rest it a little bit of tip feet if you've got the 350 i just rest it between the two stems that are holding the front rail on to take the weight because there's quite a bit of weight there then that what that does it allows us to roll it around and inspect the tire this is a rubber tire that's on there that's obviously when the blade's in it compresses slightly because it's got a slight third of a grind on the front and we're just going to check it for foreign bodies or wear or a build up of resin. This one feels in nice condition, but just to get rid of the, the resinous work or the timbers that are on there, I use what they call a scratch pad. But all you do is just give it a rub round and it's just going to get rid of the resinous material. You can also use your wire wool, but the thing not to use is a detergent or soapy water or anything like that because Obviously when that dries it's going to make the, the rubber crack and we want to keep it nice and supple so it grips on the blade and gives you a nice tracking. Like I said, this one's in decent condition so it just needs a quick clean up. And then before we put it back, it just gives us the chance to show you the cam action mechanism. Like I said, there's an angle at the back that I'm reaching around to move. That's up and down you can see how it's taking this column up and down on this cam and then the fine adjustment is done through the thread and while we've got it off what we can do is just give this a quick spray with a silicon spray which is a dry lubricant we can just give that a blast on the threads on the parts that are moving just a little bit around the cam and what that does like I say it's just a dry lubricant so it sticks on there just gives a nice moving action for when we've got the wheel back on and the blade wants tensioning so just to put the wheel back on make sure it's the right way around like I said, this is a very good fit because we've got seal for life bearings on there. But once they're on, it's a nice fixture. We can put the socket head cap screw back on. Just finger tight for now. And then again, just nip up with the Allen key. So that's in place. Just check that we've got a nice rotation, nothing out of line and that allows us to put the blade back on. Now we've got a 
19 mil or three quarter area that we're putting back on, which is the same one we took off. Obviously, if we're putting a different width or different blade on, what we do at this point is loosen the guides off and get them out of the way. But because we're putting the same blade back on, everything should track up exactly the same. So we just offer it through the slot on the machine on one side, and offer it through the slot of the rise and fall. And then we get it to actually just sit on the top reel. Just check that it's running in the centre of the guides. Then we can offer it up again onto the bottom wheel. Once we've got that in place, we can just put the cam back on, which takes the tension, and then just roll that round to make sure it's tracking correctly. But we just wanted to show you how easy it was to take this blade on and off and how to clean the wheels. Obviously, if you want to do the bottom at the same time, it's a very same procedure. And uh, you can get a nice, evenly balanced machine then. Because as the blade's going round, if there had been any eye spots, you're going to see that with a little bit of movement when the machine's running at speed. So, just to make it safe, because while the doors are open, obviously the limit switches aren't connected and we've not had the machine plugged in at that point so the machine won't operate so we've been nice and safe we can shut the doors back in the top bottom and the top and put the pin back in the table which makes it nice and safe and then we're ready to roll so i hope that's been helpful that we've been saying any more questions on the bandsaws or any of the record products please come back to us we'll do our best to show you